Meta's new LLM-based test generator is a sneak peek to the future of development. Kind of sounds exciting. Let's see what they do. I always have this worry that we're going to have millions of tests in the future, and they're all going to be, like, 90% of them are going to be horrible. Like, that's always my big worry. Meta also gave us React, so, you know, things to think about. Uh, Meta's test gen LLM is a sneak peek to the future of development productivity, specialized, orchestrated, and rigorously filtered. Okay, Meta's recently released a paper called Automated Unit Test Improvement Using Large Language Models at Meta. It's a good look at how big tech is using AI internally to, to make development faster and software less buggy. For example, Google is using AI to speed up code reviews. A major win of this paper is that while it integrates LLM into the developer's workflow, it also recommends fully formed software improvements that are verified to be both correct and an improvement to the current code coverage. Always generally worried about striving for just higher code coverage for the sake of higher code coverage. Sometimes tests are super stupid just to hit an if statement, right? You have like this internal hit if statement. The problem I have with it in general is that often once you start driving towards like 100%, you start writing tests for specific lines you've missed and then any form of refactor just invalidates the test immediately, right? Uh, compared to this GitHub Copilot, let's see, compare this to GitHub Copilot where suggestions still have to be manually verified to work by the human. What a weird statement. Is, is this written by ChatGPT? What is this? And we all know that debugging code is twice as hard as writing it. I mean, now you're just debugging tests, aren't you? Uh, unless if, oh, I'm curious if it's more like some sort of fuzzing version of the test. Uh, Meta claims that this, uh, this, this is the first paper to report on LLM generated code that has been developed independent of human intervention other than final review sign off and landed into large scale industrial production systems with guaranteed assurances for improvement over existing code bases. But isn't like, aren't we just, isn't this problem again, right? Like, aren't we just like, isn't this like the exact problem that we're running into right here? If you're saying that you're adding non-human uh, uh, intervention other than review sign off, like, isn't this, aren't you at some point going to have to debug the code and the code could be, well, it's going to be written like the, probably like the average GitHub piece of code which I'm not, I'm not trying to say, okay, I'm trying to say something here. It could be pretty shitty. Uh, furthermore, there are solid principles that developers can take away in order to use AI effectively. Like already, the first thing that I think of that would be way more cool is AI-based exploration for integration front-end tests that use seeds to, to kind of generate how they walk through the AI or how they walk or some way to keep track of exactly how they walked, how much time they did and everything. And then to be able to use that to report bugs. Kind of, you know, that tiger beetle, uh, that tiger beetle presentation that we saw where they use AI fuzzing to test like 200 years worth of transactions every single day on tiger beetle it'd be much more exciting to be able to see ai do some sort of more generated walks through your ui and try to find bugs or try to find memory problems or try to find something that's more useful than simply this which is like here's yet another unit test for me that it just feels less exciting we'll see table of contents key points <laughs> One minute read, stats, one minute read, actionable takeaways. If you're short on time, just read this three minutes. Dude, bros, I know I read, I know I read articles for the guys and gals in here. Okay. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the only professional dyslexic reader of anybody ever. If you ain't got time for a two minute intro read for your three minute read, you got to loosen up the schedule. Can we all agree here that is it re like, is it really, are you really that tight that one minute's too much? If you're short on time, I don't got two minutes. Sweet. Ridiculous. R absolutely ridiculous. I want you to know that right now. Oh, I'm going to bring chat over here so I can see it. All right. Test gen LLM uses an approach called assured LLM based software engineering. What are we assuring? Assured LLM SE. Wow. That is... <laughs> <laughs> is this where we jump the park? Okay, jump the shark. Why is it not called A L L M S E? Like, why have this word spell out, but the other? And where did base go? Uh, using private internal LLMs that are probably fine tuned. Probably. <laughs> That was a great phrase right there. Probably fine-tuned with Meta's code base. This means that it uses LLMs to generate code improvements that are backed by verifiable guarantees of improvement and non-regression. Is this really truly all fancy talk just to say more unit tests? Test gen LLM uses an uh, 
ensemble approach to generate code improvements. This means that it uses multiple LLMs, prompts, and hyperparameters. Wow, that sounds so effing fancy. Uh, to generate a set of can uh, candidate improvements and then selects the best one. This approach can help to improve the quality of generated improvements. Test LLM is a specific design to improve existing human written tests rather than generate code from scratch. Okay, that's more interesting. Okay, so this is actually more interesting, improving... So I actually have like improve the improvements. I know, dude. Dude, what are these words? They make no sense. I know. Okay, just just go with it. Um, I do want to point out something. One thing that I hate about unit tests, and I see this regularly, is uh, like with Jest. I don't know if you guys know this with Jest. Here, uh, I'm gonna go like this. Jest test. I think I have something called Jest test. If I jump in here, and I think I have these. These are generated tests. Don't don't mind them. I'm pretty sure you can go like this. Uh, test dot uh, each dot and then you can do this. And then you can actually have a function here, I believe. And there you go. There's your test, right? There you go. And you can actually pass in parameters in here, right? And so this would be A, and A would be this thing right here. Um, I hate this idea. Like, I hate logical, like a bunch of logic in your tests. Table tests, they're called. I hate table tests. I hate this kind of stuff because whenever I'm debugging, they are just such... Dude, when you need to debug your test, it's one of the worst experiences ever. And so my worry is, like, uh, right off the rip, is that if you have tests improving your already written tests, it, it, it becomes worse and worse and worse. It's basic parameterized testing. Yeah, it is basic parameterized testing until it becomes just a nightmare and a half to debug. Something about it, like, I just hate the idea of a for loop and a test. I feel it just it's something, just something bothers me. I don't know why. Hey, just call me old fashioned. Hey, maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong here. I can be, I hate, I'm fine to be wrong here, but I don't think I am. I feel like tests need zero possible logic. Like, as little logic as possible. The more declarative you can write your test, the better. You are wrong. You're wrong. Uh, test LLM has been integrated into Meta's software engineering workflows. This means that it can be used automatically to improve tests as part of the development process. It would be cool to see some screen. Let's see. It would be cool to see some screenshots of exactly how integrated, but the paper doesn't provide any. Here, we're gonna go to Twitter. Uh, anyone, anyone use the new uh, Meta test uh, LLM? What the hell do we call it? What the hell is this thing? LLM based test generator. Anyone use the new meta uh, LLM based test generator? Uh, I would like to have you on and chat. Uh, let's see, and chat about the experience for 15 minutes. Boom. I think this would be really cool. I think this would be really really cool. I actually want. I actually want. I want to hear someone explain to like explain to me some of the good parts of this because it, it is. It, it would be. It'd be. It'd be pretty. It'd be pretty interesting. Uh, Casey's gonna make it. I think. I'm pretty sure Casey has now just messaged me. Uh, let's see. Threat. Let's see. Okay. Here we go. Test LM has been integrated. Blah blah blah. Let's see. Table results from the first integrated testathon conducted in November 2023. Human test authors named by the product component on which they worked. The test. Uh, the test gen LLM tool landed in sixth place overall, that demonstrating its human competitive ad value. Okay, so they had a testathon, and the test gen LLM was compelling, and they landed sixth on number of tests written. I'm not sure if the number of tests written really is a W. Can we all agree here? Threads engineers wild. Yeah, because look, they covered less lines of code with more tests, d literally over double the tests and 33% less code. I don't know. I, I don't know what's the win here, right? I don't think like I, I think you might be measuring like overall this whole charts effed up. If anything, lines covered per test, the test gen LLM might actually be the winner here. All of a, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm starting to think maybe it's really good because this actually sounds like this. This could have been pretty nice. F friends engineer. Wait, there's friends engineer. There's a fr friend friends engineer. <laughs> I believe they call that hacking, okay? Friends engineer, hacking for sure. All right, these stats are either direct quotes or paraphrase quotes from the paper. Um, let's see, all 100, build 75, bunch rejected, 75, passed, reje rejected, added coverage. Okay, so there was 25 that added coverage. Okay, cool. The image shows that the, let's see, that in the evaluation of Reels and Stories products uh, for Instagram, 75% of LLM test cases were generated, built correctly. 57 passed rely. Can we just back up? 75% of test LLM cases built correctly. That means 
one out of four was hallucinated on some level. I now take I, I I take back everything I've said, and I now think it's fake, and this sounds actually terrifying. Like that actually is terrifying to be fifty seven percent passed reliably and twenty five percent increased coverage. I'm not convinced this is good. I am not convinced this is good. How do you measure what's right? Well, they're not. Notice that they don't say right. What they say is that this couldn't even build. Seventy five percent of them could build. 57% could just, like, they kept making green happen over and over again. And then 25% increased how many lines were covered in the tests. So nothing in here saying which, like, right or correct. The test could be complete nonsense gibberish. It just started catching lines that w- that haven't been tested. Now, again, another one of the hard parts I'm seeing right away, which is not every line is valuable to test. Let me give you a quick example, Okay. Let's pretend I had this as a uh, function, right? Um, Here, since this is JavaScript, uh, param number, there we go. And I returned here. Copilot will write it for me. Real talk, should I test that? Should you write a test for this? I'm actually curious. What what do people think? I'm going to go like this. I'm going to do a little quick poll because I'm actually actually curious about this, what people think in general about this because I think this shows two different natures. Should you test some? And I'm I'm, I'm dead serious. It is a sum function. Who here in JavaScript hasn't written a sum function like 900 times because there is no standard library sum function, right? We've all done it. We've all done it a thousand times and I'm, I'm being dead serious about this. Yes, no, I don't know, right? Like, we've all written this. So, let's see. We'll get back to this. Let's read a little bit more. We'll read a little bit more and come back to that. Test Gen was able to improve 10% of all classes to which it applied, and 73% of its test improvements were accepted by developers and landed into production. Again, a lot of questions here, which is, I have seen in my professional experience at one of the most prestigious places ever to work that sometimes when code is sufficiently confusing or involving just testing, that people will LGMT or LGTM, okay? I've seen it. I've seen some rubber stamping. LGTM looks good to me. They, 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 honestly, they give me the LGBT and we move on for the day. It's true. It's very, very true. By the way, nothing, nothing feels, okay, look at that. So most people say no. Interesting. By the way, nothing feels better than having a hype train while doing this. All right, so most people think no and about the other half think I don't know or yes. Right, you fall into the I don't know slash yes category. It's interesting that people want to. I'm I'm actually very curious about that. So me personally, uh, real talk, I wouldn't test this. I just wouldn't. This is just not something I would test. Um, a, you have to export it. Um, you have to increase the uh, you know, the API surface area. It's a simple one. I'm not really into testing. I'm just not really into testing it. Like real talk, it's just too simple. I know, I know people feel differently about that. I just think that when the function's too simple, it's just not something I'm going to waste my time on. I'm going to waste my time on the hard things, right? But management needs 99% or 90% code dev. I would tell management to fuck clean off. All right, anyways, in a test-a-thon between engineers of various meta engineers created tests in order to increase Instagram's test coverage, the median number of lines of code added by test LLM was 2.5, okay? However, one case hit the jackpot and covered 1,326 lines. This this uh, this is a really important stat, which I iterate upon below. Okay, so that's interesting that they just found a... Th- okay, so like, to me, this seems, I guess, interesting that... Maybe they could have dropped all the other tests and just this one test actually did something, right? All improved case generated during the testathon uh, did coverage at least one additional valid corner case, uh, such as an early return and or special processing for special values such as null and empty list. I don't know. Sometimes these happy case testing things, I just find so, they kind of like, they hurt refactoring. I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of it. Um Anyways, so let's look at this. Uh, prompt name, extend test. Here, let's see. Here is a Kotlin uh, unit test. Extend this class. Write an extended version of the test class to include additional tests to cover some extra corner cases. Okay, so this is just like their prompt template. All right. So they literally just pasted these classes in and made them generate stuff. Um, actionable takeaways. Test LLM is a good example of how LLMs can be used to improve dev productivity and software reliability uh, in a in a time efficient manner. I'm not convinced by that yet. There are a few takeaways I got from reading this paper that give us 
uh, a look both to how big tech is implementing LLMs internally and how any developer or engineering manager reading this can use LLMs to, uh, in a more productive manner. I'm actually worried about this too. See, this is, this is what I call conference-driven development, is that this inevitably will turn into a conference talk, which will inevitably be adopted by a bunch of people, which will inevitably create a huge amount of code, which will inevitably cause headaches down the road. I'm not convinced that this is the best way to do development. Conference-driven development isn't always that great, right? Every now and then you can find something that's truly amazing. But I am not convinced that this is a good idea. Like even, even these takeaways, this one right here was interesting. This hit the jackpot. To me, that's actually interesting. That should be something maybe you should look at because that's a lot of lines covered, at least ran once, and maybe that's a compelling reason to keep this one test or to rewrite it as a developer. To me, what it seems more interesting is if you could use the test LLM generator to give you test templates that search through your code for things that need to be covered better and give you a base test and be like, hey, this one test, if you write it, covers 1,300 lines of code. And you're like, ah, maybe, there's a, maybe there's a compelling reason to run this at least once. Okay, maybe, the, maybe there's something that's compelling about doing that. But even then, maybe it's just completely useless because it's just a happy, a happy case all the way through. And it will pretty much never hit any bugs, right? And it's just kind of like, wow, that was kind of worthless. Maybe one test to test a, uh, like a sad case or whatever you call it is a little bit different. Anyways, it's just... I'm not, I, I just don't buy these. No, many, uh, many of these are my own personal opinions that I've taken away from the paper. Incremental integrated improvement for specialized use cases. Small context window, windows and scattered dependencies make LLMs nearly unusable for non-boilerplate solutions in large code bases. Aside from any privacy concerns, it's not feasible to paste in multiple files of code into an LLM when there could be 20 plus dependencies from across the code base in a C++ header file, as an example. Even if you do paste in multiple files, there is a time and cognitive cost to actually using and trying to code out or trying the code outputted by an LLM in a chat window or even in the code editor by GitHub Copilot. In a code editor, they're trying to say VS Code without saying VS Code. <laughs> I do agree with this. Um, yeah, I mean, using these things aren't free to use. The price of extra cognitive load cannot be understated. Hacker News commenters find the inaccuracies of GPT-based tooling exhausting and unreliable. I agree. I have found that it's, it's mostly... I've been using, I've, I wanted to test something. So I've personally tested LLMs recently, which is I wanted to see, can it simply be a coverage for one of my knowledge gaps? And the coverage for my knowledge gap is I don't really know Python. I am not very good at Python. I've never really tried to be good at Python. I really just try to avoid writing Python. And I want to be able to write uh, graphs for any of the data that I'm finding, right? I just want to avoid learning Python. Just been, It's been a goal of my life to just not learn Python. I know it's stupid, but it is my goal, okay? It's my goal. Let me have my goal. And during this time, I've avoided it for quite a few years. So I've been using, I've been using ChatGPT to write my graphing stuff. And what I've effectively found is at this point, it probably would have been significantly better for me just to learn pandas and matplotlib than it would be to use LLMs at this current moment. I do use uh, ChatGPT4. I use the, the best of the best. I pay for it. And I think that it's better if I would have just learned it and moved on because I find myself constantly arguing with the thing at this point to just give me the effing code, uh, to give it to me correctly, stop making up stuff, stop having to look through things. At this point, you probably have already learned. I haven't. That's the problem is I haven't really learned Panda and Matplotlib because I just blindly copy and paste it in and look at the results. This is where the verification of outputs being both valid and non-regressive is extremely important. This means that for a long time, let's see, that this, let's see, this means that for the long-term productivity boost in large code base, improvements will probably come in incremental specialized use cases like test generation and automatic suggestion during code reviews. I do think automatic suggestions during code reviews is probably the best we're going to get, which is here's a potential bug. Here is a potential test that you could use. Here's a potential. I do think that that is really good. I would really love to see bug finding with larger context windows being like, here's a potential thing you did not consider. I actually think that would be super useful. These are also low, uh, low risk ways to save 
cumulative developer time. Goodness gracious, I'm having a stroke. Basically, GPT wrappers will continue to be useful. Finding and catching edge cases. The real value of LLMs here are displayed through the edge cases. The paradox of writing a good code is that nobody ever gets credit for fixing the problems that never happened. Correct. That's actually really great. That is a very, I, I've never heard this quote. I love it. Will Wilson, the fundamental problem of software testing is that software has to handle many situations that the developer has never thought of or will never anticipate. This limits the value of testing because if you had the foresight to write a test for the particular case, then you probably had the foresight to make the code handle that case too. This makes conventional testing great for catching regressions, but really terrible for catching all the unknown unknowns that life, the universe, and your endless creative users will throw at you. That is a quote of a lifetime right there. It is a quote of a lifetime, honestly. That is beautiful. Uh, that is so dang good. Will Wilson? Who are you, Will? Will Wilson. We're tweeting that one. Will Wilson, right? What a name. His parents really just had a good time naming him. Hey, yo, what's, what's our last name again? Wilson? Let's name, our, name, let's name our son Will. So he's Will, son of Will. You know what I'm talking about? A little Will, son of Will. <laughs> what a jerk. What a jerk move. Um, you know what I mean? Billy, Billy Bilson. Yeah, I know, dude. Just like, what are you doing with that? The most uh, test cases uh, created by MetaTest LLM only covered an extra 2.5 lines. However, one test case covered uh, uh, 1326. The value of that one test case is exponentially more valuable than the previous. I actually disagree with that. I think you can 0% say that. Can we agree to can, can we agree to that? That this is, you cannot say that phrase. Because those 2.5 lines perhaps may be way more valuable than the 1,300 lines the other way. The 1,300 lines may be all happy case. They may be all the things that will probably never break because they're just like super dumb things, right? Not all lines are created, uh, uh, not, all, uh, not all lines are created equal. I was wondering if Will Wilson was a fake person created by an LLM. I was wondering about that. I was wondering. I didn't want to say, I didn't want to, I didn't want to discredit Will, son of Will. Uh, the value, let's see. I, you cannot say, like, literally, you cannot say that one is more valuable than the other. LLMs can, vig I mean, this is, this only makes sense to people who've tested long enough. People who have not tested long enough slash bad engineering managers will think more lines covered equal more value. There's literally no guarantee. LLMs can vigorously think outside the box. I literally think LLMs can only think inside the box. Uh, and the value of catching unexpected edge cases is, is very high here. I think I think they, they are defined by the training data they receive. Uh, in fact, it's so high that the creator of Foundation's DB startup antithesis is... Uh, is entirely based on the fact that software testing edge cases are best found by AI. Really? Okay, interesting. Orchestration pipelines and processing are required. Base model LLMs aren't plug and play and shouldn't uh, reliably ever be expected to. Sure, uh, they might output pristine React and Tailwind CSS code, but that's a narrow use case in the most uh, see, in most production code bases. Yes, great, great, great. V0, if you've never used V0, V0 is amazing, by the way. V0, uh, V0.dev. This is not a sponsored ploy. I'm not sponsored by... Oh, flashbang! I am not sponsored by uh, Vercel, but uh, give me a... Uh, give me a website that reminds you of a toilet. Let's see what happens there. That's just the weirdest prompt I could come up with. They need a fair amount of processing and filtering for co-generation tasks that require correctness. Part of this processing means that grounding LLMs with example. Google and Meta both make suggestions based on existing code where the results are much, much better than raw generation. Uh, LLMs in production should take ideas from how Meta processes and filters LLM outputs, and most outputs should be expected to be discarded. I think this is one of the reasons why uh, Copilot is... I, I tend to like Copilot 10 times more than I like ChatGPT, because ChatGPT is like... Like, it's like a conversation to generate something new, whereas, or frequently, that's usually how I use it. I'm sure you could paste and code and try to figure out what's wrong. Uh, tends not to be very useful for me. Typically, whenever I run into that problem, debugging and 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 basic software non-skill issues usually fixes that problem. But Copilot is like, uh, is at least like it's it's generating code that looks like code I would have written in the style of the average GitHub code right? It like mixes my style in that. And so it's pretty good. All right. What do we got here? Toilet talk, the official blog of the bathroom, how to keep your bathroom clean, the history of the toilet, the science of flushing. Look at all this. Welcome to the throne. 
<laughs> what a name. I mean, they totally did not. I mean, this was way too crazy of one to remember, but this was, this is so your one-stop destination for all things toilet because when nature calls, we answer. Damn, that's actually, that's actually a killer slogan. That is a killer slogan. All right, I like it. I like it. Um, integration wins. LLMs do the best uh, integrated uh, into workflows. Uh, this is the reason why GitHub Copilot is so popular and another reason why G Google's workspace integrations are a great idea. Asking a chatbot uh, asking a chatbot works great for certain use cases like debugging and boilerplate. Again, I, I'm, I mean, I have seen it solve one or two bugs really well, uh, but for the most part, I, I don't find it as often that great. And boilerplate generation, I feel like Copilot, again, boilerplate just tends to be better, but but chatbots often fail at more complex use cases. How to test LLM works. Okay, so we have all this stuff, builds, passes, improves, processes, blah, 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 and it goes right into the garbage can. Okay, any of them? No, then it goes into the garbage can. This is still too simplistic. Uh, test LLM applies a series of semantic filters to uh, candidate solutions generated by Meta's internal LLMs, making sure that only the most valuable tests are preserved. Here's why. One, filtering buildability. Initial test check... Let's see, LLM checks if the generated code can be built within the app's existing infrastructure. Any code that fails to build is immediately discarded. I still can't believe 25% of it can't even make it past this step. Like, that is so wild. You know what I mean? Like, that is so wild. Filter 2, execution, does this test pass? Next, the system runs uh, the test that passed uh, the buildability filter. <laughs> is that really even a filter? <laughs> Is that like, that's what we're calling it these days? Any test that doesn't pass is discarded. This step is crucial because without a way to automatically determine the validity of a failing test, whether it's due to a bug or incorrect assertion, the test gen LLM opts to only keep those tests that can be uh, used for regression testing. AKA, they make sure that they can protect against, uh, they can protect current code against future regressions. Okay, you know what's funny? They, they're also going to codify any bugs you have. Real talk, you now have guaranteed success in failure. We reliably are unreliable. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that. This makes, me, this makes me feel happy. Dude, I do like that. I do like that phrase, the throne. Welcome to the throne. I keep thinking about it. Uh, filter three, coverage improvement. Finally, to ensure that new tests actually add value. So this is another hilarious one. Oh my goodness. To ensure that new tests actually add value, the test LLM evaluates them for their contribution to test coverage. Tests that do not enhance coverage by exploring new code paths or conditions are discarded. Holy cow, watch this. Disprove this one right away. Here you go. Are you ready for this one? Are you guys ready for this one? Are you guys ready for this one? Are you ready for this one? Uh, watch this. Uh, test sum. Here we go. Um, I say it like this. Sum uh, one, two. Uh, expect uh, sum one, two, two equal uh, three. There we go. And then the LLM comes along and goes like this. LLM, LLM generated. And they go... Right, and they and they provide nothing. Two equal, right? Try maybe some sort of try catch, right? It does some sort of try catch. Well, guess what? Guess which test is not considered? This one, right here. You know why? Because this it doesn't increase coverage. It doesn't increase coverage, and so therefore it throws away a test. Maybe that you should have planned for. I'm not saying this is a good example, right? I'm giving you a very shitty example, okay? But let's pretend there's an API. That when you provided a certain answer will blow up, but due to the fact that your happy path already covers the blowing up case, this thing will discredit or discard an actual useful test finding a bug. Anyways, I think it's just hilarious. Like to me, like these are these are all part of the the problems of this this entire approach because it, there's not. There's not a simple there's not a simple answer to this. At Meta, they count number of commits and lines of code. Don't hold your hopes really high. <laughs> Says the meta employee. He does know. This processing filters are pretty important as they guarantee improvements to a test suite. It also shows that LLMs are very far from being plug and play. The tests that successfully pass through all these filters are guaranteed to enhance the testing, uh, the, the existing test suite offering. Okay, I got an idea. Here's my idea. What if you could have something, you use something like JS doc that says this function should not throw or should not error. And then you have a fuzzing tester that goes through and attempts to make these functions throw and when it finds functions that throw or any function not marked with throw will get hammered to see if they can make it throw to me that'd be a more valuable test like can you break my code how can you break my code 
it's a little bit hard in JavaScript because JavaScript is inherently easy to break if you use TypeScript because you already have the bounds that do like the type checking, the runtime type checking, then everything internally assumes these types to be correct. So therefore you can't really fuzz out the types. Whereas with like a strict programming language, it can't do anything but fuzz the values of the type. And so it would cause kind of an oddity. It would cause you to program JavaScript as if you had no types, which may or may not be the better way to go. You know, I'm just saying it. I'm just throwing it out there. By the way, Ryan Winchester did say this. I want to use uh, that web page. Let's make a smart toilet startup uh, with anal print recognition. Imagine the day you're running from the law. You think you're safe. And nature calls. And you bend over and you're tagged. Due to the brown eye. You get tagged by the camera system because of your ass print. Damn. <laughs> You're verified, but are you anally verified? Do you think the process would stop being able to identify you if you bleached your anus? We got questions. We got lots of questions here. Thank you for ruining everything, okay? The analyzer. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. This paper is good formalization of a use case that many devs probably are using LLMs like Jet, Jeopardy, Gemini, and Minstrel Alama for. Uh, keeping it right, let's see, keeping it in writing is a good way of tracking the progress of future improvements on LLMs in software reliability space. Unit tests are probably the lowest, most basic level of code generation where LLMs have the most immediate value. See, it's funny, like I actually I, I fundamentally agree with the premise that I think LLMs offer a lot for testing value, but I fundamentally disagree that it's unit unit testing. I actually think integration and random walk, stochastic walking, it just provides such a better place for this. Like, I'm just completely convinced that is such a better place. Uh, but as time goes on, we'll definitely see LLMs being able to catch up and to test for bugs in an increasingly complex software systems. The question is, what will make software easier to develop in the long run? Or will it lead to proliferation of software complexity in the future? I think it's going to be the latter more than the former. But it is a good question to ask. Maybe it will make it easier. Maybe it does truly make things easier. I'm, I'm just not buying it. But it's, an inter it's a very cool thought process, and it's very interesting that they're trying this out. I would love to see Meta in six months give an update to whether they like it or not. And I'd again, I would love to see anyone that works on this, if anybody works on this, I would love to hear a 15-minute talk because I want it. Uh, I, would, I would love that. Where, where, is, where is this dang thing? Did anyone? Because if anyone responded to this, I will bring them on immediately. Nice. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. If anyone knows this, I want to find I want to find someone that actually works on it. Test driven development, that's pretty funny. No. Okay. Anyways, I hope somebody responds at some point with it. That would be fantastic. Anyways, hey, the name is I don't know. What do you guys think? Hold on, real real question. Does anyone actually think this is a good idea? Anyone here think it's a good idea? Assured? The toilet agent? The poop agent? Maybe later. Okay, fair. They will abuse the metrics absolutely. I mean, it's the one problem uh, analyzing? Yes. Worth exploring? I agree. I actually do. I do agree it's worth exploring. Partially? Job stolen. <sighs> Guys, the name. Anally verified a gin.